بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off last week and that's why you can see the red highlighted text. So inshallah we'll, we'll continue from there. Where the Shaykh was discussing with regard to speech. He was, talking, he was talking about when are the situations when somebody should speak and when are the situations when somebody should remain silent. And so he continues, he said, وَمَا يَنْوِي أَوْ يُرِيدُ الْإِنسَانَ يُرِيدُ الْإِنسَانُ أَتْحَدُّثَ بِهِ لَا يَخْلُو مِنْ حَالَاتٍ ثَلَاثٍ فِي رُؤْيَةِ الْإِنسَانِ لَهُ قَبْلَ التَّحَدُّثَ بِهِ So he says, so basically there's three situations that a person should consider uh, before speaking. Uh, and, and he's numbered them here. One, two, and three. So he says uh, the first. The first situation says, "Imma an yara annahu khairun wadhihun, fahada yatakallam bihi wala haraj alay. Or yara annahu sharun wadhihun, fahada yajib alay an yamna u lisanahu minhu, wa an yasoon lisanahu min atakallam bi shar. Wa imma an tashtabih alayhi al kalima, yurid an yaqul." أن يقول كلمة لكن اشتبه لكن اشتبهت عليه لا يدري هي خير أو شر الواجب عليه أيضا في هذا الصنف أن يمنع نفسه من قوله قد قال عليه الصلاة والسلام فمن اتقى الشبهات فقد استبرأ لدينه ورده والحديث قوله من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقول خيرا أو ليصمت دليل على ذلك دليل على أن الإنسان لا يتكلم إلا بخير واضح أما إذا كان ما سيقوله شر أو تردد هل هو شر أو خير فلا يقول لا يقول إلا الخير الواضح قال من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقول Khairan aw liyasmud. So then, the Shaykh, he mentions these three situations. And the first one is that if you know, if the person knows that what they are going to say is good and it contains goodness and is clear, then he, then speak and inform people of that. Secondly, the second situation is where the person knows that it's evil or wrong. So then in that situation, you remain quiet and do not say that which is wrong or bad or evil. And thirdly, the third situation is where the person isn't sure about what they're going to say, whether it actually is good or bad, and he's doubtful about the matter. So the Sheikh says in this case or situation, you should remain quiet. And then he quotes uh, a hadith from, of the Prophet Sallallahu where the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever fears the uh, doubtful matters or stays away from the doubtful matters and doesn't enter into them, then then there's no blame on him in terms of his religion or his honor. As an example, also the hadith that the Shaykh mentioned last week as well, uh, several times and mentions here again, whoever believes in Allah and the last day, then say that which is good or remain silent. And this is what the Shaykh mentions here in this paragraph that we read. So he continues, he says, Ashahidu, anna ha'ulai qalu kalimatan wa hiya qawluhum 
ma ra'ayna mithla qura'ina haula haula'i arghaba butunan wala akdhaba alsunan wala ajbana inda liqa fa kharaju biha min millat alislam wa nazala qawla Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qul abillahi wa ayati wa rasulihi kuntum tastahzi'un la ta'tadiru qad kafartum ba'da imanikum ja'a rajulu الذي قال هذه المقالة إلى النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام ليأتذر وأمسك بنسع ناقة النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم راكب على الناقة وأخذ يأتذر من الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام يقول إنما كنا نخوض ونلعب أردنا أن نقطع عناء الطريق أي تعب السفر السفر يحدث فيه ملل فنزيد فنريد أن نمضي السفر والوقت ليس قصدنا ذات الاستحزاء وذات السخرية وإنما أردنا التصلية في الطريق وتمضي وتمضية الوقت ما أردنا حقيقة الاستهزاء قال إنما كنا نخوض ونلعب يعني قلنا هذا الكلام من باب الخوض واللعب وتمذية الوقت لم تقصد حقيقة الاستهزاء وإنما كنا نخوض ونلعب فما كان النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام يزيد على قل أب الله وآياته ورسوله كنتم تستهزئون لا تأتذروا قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم والرجل يعيد والصخر ينكب قدمه وهو يمشي إلى جنب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ممسكا بنس الناقة يقول يا رسول الله إنما كنا نخوض ونلب إنما أردنا إنما أردنا قطع قطع أو قطع عناء الطريق فما كان عليه الصلاة والسلام يلتفت إليه وما كان عليه الصلاة والسلام يزيد على قل أب الله وآياته ورسوله كنتم تستحزئون لا تأتذروا قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم So in this paragraph the Sheikh he says the point being continuing from last week's lesson the point being that that these these words that they said um, and you know from last week the words that they said about the companions and the Muslims that uh, they said about them as you remember we don't see them except uh, filling their bellies as in wanting food they only want food and and we don't see that their tongues and what they say is except but lies and they are cowards when it comes to doing something, for example, if you have to go out for fighting or qital, fighting or war, as this was related to <coughs> one of the ghazwas, as mentioned last week, the battles that took place. So the Sheikh says that you remember that because of them saying this uh, and the uh, use of this kind of language, mockery, um, uh, mocking and mockery, then this caused them to leave the fold of Islam and as you remember from uh, the ayah quoted last week, "Qul abillahi wa ayati wa rasulihi kuntum tastahzi'un la ta'tadru qad kafartum ba'da imanikum." But Allah said to the Prophet to say, "He said, say, is it, is it with Allah and His signs and His proofs and His signs and His evidences and His messenger that you are mocking or making fun of, jesting about? You don't." You're not excused, or you won't, you, you won't be excused, or there's no excuse for you. You have disbelieved after you had believed. So the Shaykh just explains this further, uh, going on into this paragraph. He says that this the man, the man that began this, one of the hypocrites, the man that began with this kind of speech. He went to the Prophet Sallam, and you know, while the Prophet Sallam was riding on his. Uh, I think he was on his horse or uh, his camel, sorry, when he was on his camel. the This person, he came and he was 
he was trying to seek an excuse with the Prophet Sallallahu and asking for him to be excused from what he said. And the Prophet Sallallahu didn't look at him and didn't say anything except this ayah that we just read. The Prophet Sallallahu re- repeated this ayah and he didn't say anything else and didn't even turn to him. He ignored him except mentioning this ayah to him. So where Allah said that you've disbelieved after you had believed because of the mockery that they mocked the Prophet Sallallahu and the Muslims and they mocked the deen of Allah. And this man, he, he was saying, oh, we were only trying to pass time. We were trying to pass time. We were trying to, as they say in English, we were trying to kill time. We we're trying to pass the time because of the journey. And we were just merely playing and jesting around. But because of that playing and jesting around with regards to the deen of Allah, it caused them to leave the fold of Al-Islam. And later on, you know, they, they were, uh, as, as we know, they, they were from the hypocrites. So, the Shaykh continues, he says, As, um, yeah, yeah, the Shaykh says, Fal, as, uh, Fal istihza'u billahi aw bil rasoolihi aw bi deen illahi jalla wa ala aw bi shay'in min deen min ad-deen aw bil Qur'an aw bi shay'in min ayat al-Qur'an aw bi shay'in min ahadith al-Rasool alayhi salatu wa salam yudhkaru lil-insani mathalan hadithun fa yaskhar وَيَسْتَحْزِئُ بِحَدِيثِ الرَّسُولِ عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ هَذَا كُلُّهُ كُفْرٌ نَاكِلٌ مِنْ مِنَ الْمِلَّةِ كما قال الله سبحانه وتعالى قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم أي بهذا الاستهزاب وبهذا السخرية بدين الله عز وجل وكما عرفنا بدءا أن السخرية قائمة على المعارضة, على المعارضة للدين والإسلام قائم على الموافقة والاستسلام والتوعية والامتثال لرب العالمين. So then the Sheikh says that so this mocking and jesting around uh, 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 obviously mocking Allah Jalla wa Ala or mocking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or mocking the Deen of Allah, the religion of Allah Jalla wa Ala or mocking a thing from uh, the religion of Allah Jalla wa Ala or mocking the Qur'an or its verses or the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or anything from the deen uh, such as this uh, and and mocking and jesting around and making fun of it and and as mentioned last week as well then any of this results in the person leaving the fold of Al-Islam and then the Shaykh mentions part of the ayah again that we mentioned er- that was mentioned earlier and also last week several times uh, and the shaykh he mentions here he says that as we know uh, in the beginning what well, he mentioned in the beginning that mocking and jesting is is based upon um rejecting the deen this is what is based upon what results in rejecting the deen and this is why people do it because Deep down, they are rejecting it, and so they make fun out of it, and try to denigrate the religion. Uh, and as we know, the Sheikh says that Islam, the the religion of Al Islam, is built upon agreeing and in and being uh, uh, being in a state of submission and obedience and carrying out the commandments that Allah set forth and Prophet Sallallahu set forth. Yeah, this is what the Sheikh mentions here. So that ends the sixth nullifier. We move on to the seventh nullifier, inshallah. So we'll continue. So the Sheikh he says, Adars of Thamin, the eighth lesson within the uh, his lessons that he gave Hafidullah. We'll just skip the introduction. There's no need for that. We've already we've already done the introduction, alhamdulillah. So he says, "Asabi al sihr, wa minhu, wa minhu al sarf wa al atf, fa man faalahu aw radiya bihi kafar." Wa dalilu qoluhu taala, "Wa ma yuallimani min ahadin hatta yaqula inna ma nhnu fitna tun fala takfur." So the Sheikh he says, and the seventh nullifier, the seventh nullifier. 
is Sihr, uh, magic. And the Sheikh says, from it is, as we know, the different types of magic uh, that is going to explain, inshallah. So we'll hold out until the explanation of this. Um, and also, the person who does it, um, uh, whoever is pleased with it, um, and such. And the Sheikh says the evidence of that is what we read part of Surah Al Baqarah, verse 102. If you read the uh, the whole ayah, we will we'll read the whole ayah. They followed what the, the devils gave out falsely of, of the magic in the lifetime of Suleiman. Suleiman, Solomon did not disbelieve, but the devils disbelieved, teaching men magic and such things that came down at Babylon to the two angels, Harut and Marut. But neither of these two angels taught anyone such things till they said, till they, t until they had said, we are only for trial, so disbelieve not by learning this magic from us. And from these angels, people learn that by which they cause separation between man and his wife, but they could not thus harm anyone except by Allah's leave. And they learn that which harms them and profits them not. And indeed, they knew what the buyers of it, magic, would have no share in the hereafter. And how bad indeed was that for which they sold their own selves, if they but knew. So the Sheikh continues. He says, "The second, uh, sorry, the um, the seventh nullifier of Islam from the nullifiers of Islam is magic. Disregard that bit. There's a mistake there, typo. So it's magic. The seventh nullifier is magic. And the Sheikh says, 'Wa huwa kufrun billahi azza wa jal kama dala ala dalika kitab Allah.'" قد ذكر المصنف رحمه الله تعالى الدليل على كفر الساحر من كتاب الله عز وجل وسحر سمي سحرا لخفائه لأنه يقع في خفاء وأصل معنى هذه الكلمة ما دق وما ما دق وما لطف سببه هم أو ما دق ولطف سببه فشيء الذي يكون بقوه بخفاء يسمى بهذا الاسم هذا أصل معنى الكلمة. so then the sheikh says here he says magic and he continues mentioning magic and he says he's going to explain this in light of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. and um, obviously as we know uh, as the sheikh mentions that magic uh, performing magic or being pleased with it or doing it or taking part in it, any form, shape or form, results in disbelief. And the Sheikh says, Sihr or magic, it's named Sihr because it's what is hidden. Meaning that it's the word itself, it refers to what's hidden. Something that's hidden or something that's light or hidden away is not seen. That's the... Uh, the origins of this word, the meaning of the word linguistically. This is what the Sheikh mentions here as, as benefit, as a benefit for us. He goes on to say, وَالسِّحْرْ يُدَبَّرْ بِخَفَاءْ وَلِهَذَا قَدْ يُبْتَلَ الْإِنسَانُ بِمَرَدٍ أَوْ سَقَمٍ أَوْ نَحْوَ ذَلِكَ عَنْ طَرِيقِ السِّحْرْ وَلَا يَدْرِي لِأَنَّ هَذَا الْأَمْرْ يَقَوْ خَفَاءً وَغَالِبٌ عَمْلَ السَّحْرَةِ عمل الصحراء أيضا يكون في الخفاء فيعملون في الليل المظلم أو في الإتم أو يشعلون نارا أو بخورا أو دخانا أو نحو ذلك فالسحر سمي سحرا لأنه يقع في الخفاء وأهله يتعاملون به في الخفاء وأمورهم التي يصنعون بها السحر يصنعونها في خفاء وكل وكلماتهم التي يقولونها لإقض السحر يأقدونها بخفاء بهمهمة وتمتمة وتلاسم فالسحر كله خفاء ولهذا سمي سحرا. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say that um, in terms of considering um, uh, uh, magic then magic, when it's done generally or uh, most of the time, the vast majority of the time, 
it's done in secret, hidden. And the Sheikh also says this is a reason also that when a person is tested and trialed by way of magic, whether it be a uh, an illness uh, or a chronic illness um, um, or the likes of that, he, he doesn't know. Most of the time when it happens, the person doesn't know straight away what's wrong with them because of the secrecy around it, because of the way magic is done. It says that this fair, obviously because this fair, this affair of magic, when it happened, it happened in secrecy. And the Sheikh says that the vast majority of the time, this is the case. It's in secrecy and hidden. It's done in hiding and away from the people and away from their knowledge. And so the Sheikh says that they, they work in the night. So for example, the magicians, they work uh, in the darkness of the night. Or, you know, and you know they may light a fire or they'll hide or be away in a secluded area um and the likes of this they they be they, their their works their work is like this hidden away in in seclusion far away from the people and the sheikh says this is why the word itself uh, that's why it's in arabic it's sihr because it refers to the secrecy seclusion and hiding away um so the sheikh says and this is how Sihr is performed away from the people in the vast majority of cases. And the magicians, they work in this way. And their affair is like this. And this is how they perform their magic, etc. And also from their words as well. So when they like blow into the knots and they say their words, their whispers and other words and phrases that they say, then they also do it in this way. Secrecy and it's hidden and it's quiet and it's whispering and it's not understood. And the whole thing is shrouded in this kind of secrecy and seclusion and hidden away. So uh, the Sheikh carries on and he says, وَهُوَ فِي الْإِسْتِلَاحِ إِبَارَةٌ عَنْ عَزَائِمْ وَرُقَى وَأُقَدْ تُؤَثِرُ فِي الْمَصْحُورِ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ يَزَّ وَجَلْ وَمَا هُمْ بِضَارِّينَ بِهِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَالْمُرَادُ إِذْنُهُ جَلَّ وَعَلَى الْكَوْنِ الْكَدَرِ لأنه لا يقع في كون الله سبحانه وتعالى إلا شيء قدره الله وقضاه ومنه ما يؤثر في الأبدان فيؤثر مرضا وسقما ومنه ما يؤثر في القلوب فيورث هما وغما وشدة ومنه ما يمرض ومنه ما يقتل ومنه ما يفرق أو يفرق يفرق بين المرء وزوجه so then the Sheikh says here that and from the uh, so that's covering the linguistics the uh, from the language point of view of the meanings and then from the uh, uh, religious perspective and the meaning then is it is uh, an expression related to um, uh, the magicians blowing uh, or not spitting on them saying stuff on uh, on the th items of uh, magic and they then Obviously, by way of these, um, they affect uh, the person who's the, who's the target of this magic. Um, and then the Sheikh mentions an ayah, part of the ayah from the ayah that we read earlier from Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 102, part of it, which we read in Arabic just a moment ago, meaning that uh, that none is harmed by this magic except by the permission of Allah. Nobody, a person isn't harmed except by the permission of Allah. And the Sheikh says that the intent behind this uh, and the meaning of it is that what Allah has uh, predestined and willed from his qadr, from his taqdeer and qadr, right? So obviously this is from the wisdom of Allah and the test for the people. But this is from what has been predestined uh, from the uh, um, divine uh, predestination and will of Allah Jalla was Allah, Allah's willed. So if 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 that's the case, then if if that's if Allah wills, then the person will be affected by. It. And if Allah did not will it from His qadr, then He will not be affected by it. So that's important to remember. <clears throat> and the Sheikh mentions that here. And so, uh, so if it's will for the person, they'll be affected by whether it's their body, they may be affected by the, the harm to their body, like a disease or an affliction of some sort, and whether it's to do with if the heart's affected then the person will become distressed and uh, depressed and um, 
uh, you know, feel uh, in a in a bad situation or might get angry and these kinds of like the emotion that's related to it. So obviously there's body, there's there are bodily effects as well as the spiritual effects as well. Uh, and then the Sheikh says also there's from the effects of sihr or magic is that a person can also be killed by it, can end up being killed. And as we know, uh, um, also uh, the separation of man and wife and and other, as we know. But the Sheikh just mentioned a few examples for us here so we can compare and contrast. So the Sheikh continues, he says, وَسَاهِرُ لَا يَكُونُ سَاهِرًا إِلَّا بِالْكُفْرِ بِاللَّهِ لِأَنَّ حَقِيقَةَ السِّحْرِ تعاون متبادل بين من يريد التعاطي السحر وبين الشياطين فيقدم لهم خدمات ويقدمون لهم خدمات فهو عقد او عقد متبادل بين من يريد السحر وبين الشياطين ولا يكون الساحر ساحرا الا بالكفر بالله ولا يرضى الشياطين ابرام العقد معه إلا بالكفر بالله ونبذ كتاب الله سبحانه وتعالى فإذا كان منه ذلك كفر بالله عز وجل خدموه مقابل الخدمة التي قدمها لهم في فساد في فساد أقيدته هو من جهة وإفساد أقائد الناس من جهة أخرى وكلما كان الصاهر أشد أشد كفرا أشد كفرا بالله سبحانه وتعالى كان ذلك أقوى في السحر عنده والتأثير فيه. So then in this paragraph the Sheikh says that a magician does not become a magician except by disbelieving in Allah. So that's what we need to be clear on. The person who is doing magic has not reached that status of being able to do that magic except by disbelieving in Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Because the reality of magic, it's cooperating with the shayateen, the devils, in exchange. It's an exchange. It's a mutual. It's a, it's a mutual exchange. And what they want, the Sheikh says, yeah, what they want is for you to offer up your religion, sell your soul, so to speak, commit shirk with Allah, commit kufr, and in exchange for that. And for example. Um, getting the Quran and you know defiling and debasing the Quran as we know these kinds of acts in exchange so the shayateen will ask you to uh, be of service to them and do these kinds of things commit kufr and debase the Quran and the deen of Allah in exchange for their services which is the magic that you're going to do and you're going to ask them to do things for you so you can see uh, the situation here and it, and it results in, of course, it, uh, the stipulation is that the person, the magician, has to disbelieve in Allah and debase the deen of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And the Shaykh will explain this in more detail later on. So this is what the Shaykh has said here. And so the Shaykh brings uh, uh, the evidence uh, from Surah Al-Baqarah verse 101 to 103. So let's read that, inshallah. <clears throat> ولما جاءهم رسول من عند الله مصدق لما معهم نبذ فريق من الذين أوتوا الكتاب كتاب الله وراء ظهورهم كأنهم لا يعلمون واتبعوا ما تتل الشياطين على ملك سليمان وما كفر سليمان ولكن الشياطين كفروا يعلمون الناس السحر وما أنزل على الملكين بباب لهاروت وماروت وما يعلمان من أحد حتى يقول إنما نحن فتنة فلا تكفر فيتعلمون منهما ما يفرقون به بين المرء وزوجه وما هم بضارين به من أحد إلا بإذن الله ويتعلمون ما يضرهم ولا ينفعهم ولقد علموا لمن اشتراه ما له في الآخرة من خلاق وَلَبِئْسَ مَا شَرَوْ بِهِ أَنفُسَهُمْ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ So, let's just get the meanings of, of what we've read. And when there came to them a messenger from Allah, i.e. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, confirming what was with them, a party of those who were given the scripture threw away the book of Allah behind their backs as if they did not know. 
They followed what the devils gave out falsely of magic in the lifetime of Suleiman Solomon. Suleiman did not disbelieve, but the, but the devils disbelieved, teaching men magic and such things that came down at Babylon to the two angels, Harut and Marut. But neither of these two angels taught anyone such things till they had said, We are only for trial, so disbelieve not by learning this magic from us. And from these angels, people, people learn that by which they cause separation between man and his wife, but they could not thus harm anyone except by Allah's leave and Allah's permission. And they learn that which harms them and profits them not. And indeed, they knew what the buyers of it, magic, would have no share in the hereafter. And how bad indeed uh, was that for which they sold their own selves if they knew, if they but knew. Okay, and then this final ayah, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَمَثُوبَةٌ مِّنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ And if they had believed and guarded themselves from evil and kept their duty to Allah, far better would have been the reward from their Lord, if they but knew. So the Shaykh, he brings the evidence for us, and he carries on and he says, فَهَذَا السِّيَاقُ الْمُبَارَكُ في بيان حقيقة السحر وكفر وكفر الساحر في سورة البقرة جدير بأن يتدبر المسلم مليا في هذا الباب باب السحر باب السحر ومعرفة حقيقته ومعرفة خطره وسوء وسوء عاقبته على أهله وهذا السياق المبارك دل على كفر الساحر من وجوه تبلغ سبعة so the Shaykh says that if we ponder over these verses that we just read, then this clarifies to us uh, the reality of the magician and his disbelief. Yeah, that these three ayahs that we've read from Surah Al-Baqarah. From Surah Al-Baqarah, and if we ponder over the, if the Sheikh says, if the most uh, the Muslim pond, ponders over these verses in 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 this subject and topic that we're discussing, it is sufficient for for him to understand and have knowledge of the actuality and reality um, uh, of of the dangers and the evil and 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 the ending and the conclusions of what would happen if 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 the person, the person was doing magic. And the Sheikh mentions that, and and he says also that the magician, from from looking at and pondering over these verses that he mentions and he brought as evidence, when if you ponder over them, there are seven points to discuss with regards to it, and he says he will he will explain and clarify these seven points inshallah uh, now. So he continues. He says waqad. بدأ جل وعلا هذه الآيات في بيان أن الصحرة لا يقع ولا يكون ولا يكون الإنسان صاحرا إلا بمقدمتين من خلالهما يلج في السحر ويكون من أهله وأربابه. So the Sheikh says that basically that there are two things that a magician has to do to be able to enter in 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 the work of a magician or to become a magician and he enters into magic by way of two things that he needs to put forth or do uh, and it becomes from the people of magic and the sheikh says the first he says al al ula the first offering or thing that he needs to do for the shayateen the devils is he says nabad al kitab kitabullah al munazzal بِالْإِعْرَاضِ عَنْهُ وَبِإِهَانَتِهِ وَبِتَدْنِيسِهِ وَبِمُمَارَسَةِ الْعَمَالِ السَّيِّئَةِ مَعَ الْكِتَابِ فَكُلَّمَا كَانَ النَّبْذُ لِلْكِتَابِ أَعْظَمُ كَانَ ذَلِكَ أَعْظَمُ تَقَرُّبًا لِشَيَاطِينِ وَتَمَكُّنًا مِنَ السِّحْرِ قَالَ نَبَذَ فَرِيقٌ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِهِمْ كَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ فَهَذِهِ الْخُطُورَةُ خُطْوَة فهذه الخطوة الأولى أو المقدمة الأولى وهي أول ما تطلبه شياطين ممن أراد أن يتعلم السحر ولهذا يطلبون ممن أراد أن يتعلم السحر أن يمتهن القرآن 
bi an yada alaihi wal yadu billah al qadurat aw yadahu fi makan fi makan al qadurat aw wal yadu billah yatuhu bi qadmihi aw nahwa dhalika yatlubuna minhu dhalika yataqarrabu bi hadha al amali wa bi hadha al sani'i li shayatin wa hadha kufr billah hadhihi al mumar mithla hadhihi al mumarasat ma kitab billah tabarak wa ta'ala kafra billah كفر بالله أو يطلبون منه أن أن يكتب القرآن مثلا بالدم أو أو دم الحائض أو يطلبون منه أن يكتب القرآن منكسا عبثا بكتاب الله جل وعلا أو يطلبون منه أن يكتب القرآن ويخلط معه أسماء الشياطين يملونها عليه إلى غير ذلك من السناع والأعمال التي يراد بها امتحان القرآن ولهذا وجد في بعض التمائم التي تؤقد وتسنع على أيدي سهرة وجد في بعدها كتابة 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 آيات من القرآن وفي التميمة قطع من الدم أو قطع من الروث جنوبا إلى جنوب مع كتاب الله أو فوق الآيات أو على على يمين الآيات أسماء شياطين ونحو ذلك امتحان للقرآن فيؤلقون فيؤلقون على المصاب آيات ممتهنة يتقربون بامتحانها إلى شياطين ويؤلقونها على من أراد خدمة من أراد خدمته فلا يكون صاهر صاهر إلا بنبذ كتاب الله وكل ما كان نبذه لكتاب الله سبحانه وتعالى عدم كان ذلك أمكن له في السحر هذه الأولى so in this long paragraph the sheikh mentions so what the person has to do is he has to denigrate and debase the book of Allah and the sheikh brings the part of the ayah from uh, the, uh, one of the verses that we read from between verse 101 to 103 from Surah Al-Baqarah where, uh, where the priests, the rabbis, the rabbis through the, when they knew the truth about the Qur'an and that is the word of Allah Jalla wa'ala and it is the deen of Allah and that the Prophet was sent, they threw it behind their backs and, and, and this is what's happening. So what, what the sahir does or the, the magician, he has to denigrate and debase and defile the Qur'an. In, in, a, in a number of ways. So the Sheikh gives some examples. For example, turning away from the Quran, debasing it, degrading it, throwing it around, throwing it in the bathroom, you know, covering it with uh, uh, excrement and dirt, you know, and all these kinds of things. Um, also, for example, this is what they do as well, is, you know, they'll write the Quran backwards. So they write the verses backwards. They'll write them in blood or in excrement. And in feces and um, in in period blood impure blood and things like this, so they'll do all these kinds of nasty acts to debase, defile the Quran. And this is the this this is what the devils of the of, from the jinn they request from this person. This is the first thing that they request from him or from him or her. And the Sheikh says this is why you'll see that also like if you've ever opened up, <coughs> excuse me. If you ever opened up a ta'weed or uh, a tamaim, as they say in Arabic, or ta'weed as well, like if you open up a uh, like a, um, a talisman or something like this, and you open up, open it up, the people, the things that they hang around their neck, as you see, that's popular, you see, around with people wearing things around their neck, thinking it's protecting them. If you open it up, the Sheikh says, sometimes you'll see the verses of Allah, uh, sorry, the verses of the Quran, the kalam of Allah, the speech of Allah written, and it's written in... Uh, impurities of various kinds or it'll have the names of um, uh, the devils from the shayateen, their names be in between the, the verses of, of the Quran or besides them and the likes of this. This is what the shayateen So he says this is the first thing that the devils request from the person. So this is the first thing that they ask in terms of initiation or what they want them to do. The second task they give them, the shaykh says, Athaniya too. اتباع ما تتلوه الشياطين عليه فكلما كان متبعا لهم مطيئا 
Lahum abdan nahum fi had al tiba. And also, sorry, I forgot to mention. And so, in the first point, and just going back to that quickly, that the the more of this defiling and debasing and acts, these uh, denigrating acts that they commit and atrocities that they commit against the Deen of Allah and the Book of Allah, the the more likely and the more strong uh, the magic and the more uh, uh, service they will receive from the devils. So the devils will be more uh, uh, will be more inclined to help them and uh, and and to help them with the magic. Uh, depending, it's like a, it's basically uh, directly proportional to uh, the effort they put in in terms of denigrating and debasing the the book of Allah and doing all these acts. So then, moving on to the second point, the Sheikh continues. Says, "Athania itibau ma tatluhu shayatin alayhi." فكل ما كان متابعا لهم مطيعا لهم عبدا لهم بهذا الاتباع لأن هذا الاتباع أبودية للشياطين وهو كفر بالله ويدل لأن ويدل ويدل ذلك لأن هذا الاتباع وطاعة للشياطين أبودية لهم حديث لحديث عدي ابن حاتم لما سمع قول الله عز وجل اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أرباب من دون الله قال يا رسول الله ما كنا نعبدهم قال أليس كانوا يحلون الحرام فتحلونه ويحرمون الحلال فتحرمونه قال بلى قال تلك عبادتهم فاتباع فاتباع شياطين فيما تتلوه و و تمليه هذا من الإبادة الإبادة من الإبادة للشياطين وهذا كفر بالله. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says that second the second point or the second part of this initiate initiation or task that the devil set for the uh, to be a magician is um, is to follow what they um, Command him with, so follow what they say and tell him. The sh- the devils tell him, so everything that they tell him to do, and he follows them in that, and he's obedient in that, and he's subservient in that to them. Then with all of that, he's worshiping the sh- the devils by way of that. He's worshiping the devils because he's subservient to them and following their commands, and he's executing their commands, whatever they. What whatever those commands may be, and so he's obviously committing shirk with Allah Jalla Wala. And the Sheikh says that this shows us that uh, this is because following their commands and what they what they tell you to do in from from in terms of obedience and uh, on being obedient to the devils is worship. It's it's taking away the hak of Allah from Allah to other than Allah. So worship is the right of Allah. That Allah is the one who deserves all worship, as we all know. So taking any part of that worship and sharing it with someone else, whether it's a jinn or whether it's anything else, as we know, is tantamount to shirk, and therefore takes you out of the fold of Al Islam. And so the Sheikh brings the hadith of Adi ibn Hatim when he heard the Prophet sallallahu uh, uh, when he heard Allah azza wa jal say in his in his book. They took their rabbis and their monks and their rabbis, as we heard earlier. They took their monks and their rabbis, lords besides Allah Jalla Wala. And he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about this. He says, "We we we didn't worship them." And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied to him, and he said to him, "When obviously b- before I became Muslim, is it not that they were these monks and the rabbis? Is it not that they were?" Making uh, they were making that which was halal haram, and that which was haram halal. He said that to him, and uh, Adi ibn Hadim radiallahu anhu. He said, "Yes, ya Rasulullah. Yes, that's right." And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied to him. He says that was their worship. Why, as we know, as as we know, just as a clarification that. That's for Allah. Allah makes something haram and Allah makes something halal. That's 
the law of Allah Jalla wa'ala, and that's Allah's right. It's not for anybody else to come and say, oh no, this is halal and this is haram. Why? Because then they've brought themselves to the same level of Allah in terms of hukum, judgment and rulings and legislation. So the Shaykh says that. So therefore, with, with these uh, uh, magicians, they follow the they follow what the devils tell them to do and what they recite upon them and what they tell them to do and they, uh, uh, of commandments and things to do. And they follow them in that. And so because of that, they are worshipping the devils and therefore committing disbelief in Allah Jalla wa'ala. And then the Shaykh goes and says, فَإِذًا بِهَذَيْنِ الْأَمْرَيْنِ وَبِهَاتَيْنِ الْمُقَدِّمَتَيْنِ يَدْخُلُ الْإِنسَانَ إِنسَانٌ فِي بَوَّابَةِ السِّحْرِ الْمُظْلِمَةِ وَحَوَّتْهُ السَّحِيقَ وَيَكُونُ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ بِاللَّهِ الْعَذِيمِ وَهَذَا سِيَاقُ الْمُبَارَكِ دَلَّ عَلَى كُفْرِ الصَّاحِرِ مِنْ وُجُوهٍ عَدِيدًا So then the last two with these two affairs that he's mentioned to us and with these two offerings that these uh, potential uh, and upcoming magicians do, they enter uh, the person or these mag magicians become magicians and they enter the world of magic. And they enter uh, a contract uh, with the uh, devils, the shayateen. And, you know, they debase themselves and they end up in this a miserable and dark life that they've entered and they commit kufr with Allah Jalla wa Ala. And the Shaykh says that, and with this uh, blessed uh, context, or so the context that is brought, this demonstrates to us uh, the disbelief of uh, the uh, magician. And he says that it comes from many angles. And so, inshallah, we'll discuss those angles uh, in the uh, upcoming lesson next week inshallah barakallahu feekum subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh